What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand spinal cord anatomy so that you can better understand your patients, and also pass the NPTE. The spinal cord is part of the central nervous system and is basically a bundle of nerves that go from the brain to the muscles to produce motor output and from the skin back to the brain for sensory input. After each spinal segment, there are peripheral nerves leaving and entering the spinal cord so that information can get to and from the brain. The spinal cord ends around L1, L2 at the conus medullaris. From there, you have just a bundle of peripheral nerves, aka lower motor neurons, in what we call the cauda equina or the horse's tail, which then branch out or come back from the legs. Groups of nerves that have similar responsibilities will be grouped together within the spinal cord. So you can actually cut the spinal cord and see the cross section and you can guess at where these bundles of nerves are located. In the back of the spinal cords, you have the dorsal columns, aka the medial lemniscal pathway. This is technically made out of two sections, the fasciculus gracilis, which goes to the trunk and the lower extremities, and the fasciculus cuneatus, which goes to the head, neck, and upper extremities. This bundle, or tract, measures proprioception, light touch, and vibration, and is really important because these things are testable. Okay, so you can do things like dermatomes, uh, tuning fork vibration, and two-point discrimination to determine whether or not this tract is still intact. Now when this tract goes back up to the brain to bring its information there, it actually crosses over at the brainstem. So information from the left side of the body is going to go to the right side of the brain. We also know that information from lower down will be more medial in the dorsal columns, whereas information from the head, neck, upper extremities will be more lateral. The other testable sensory tract is the spinothalamic tract, which has a lateral and anterior portion. This tract measures pain and temperature and crosses at the level of the spinal cord to the other side. So this is really useful between the dorsal columns and the spinothalamic tract in determining where the injury is. Another difference from the dorsal columns is that the cervical information is more medial, whereas the uh, lower information like the lumbar and sacral regions is going to be more lateral. The spinothalamic tract can be tested by doing sharp dull discrimination, as well as taking a warm or cool test tube and placing it against the skin. Other sensory tracts include the spinocerebellar, which does subconscious proprioception, the spinotectal, which does visual reflexes, and the spinoolivary tract, which does skin and organ proprioception. These tracts aren't really testable because they're subconscious. Now, the only testable motor tract is the corticospinal tract, which also has a lateral and anterior portion. This tract does voluntary motor along with the corticobulbar tract, which does voluntary motor for the head, which is why you don't really see it in the spinal cord. Together, these two tracts make up the pyramidal tracts, which means they pass through the pyramids of the medulla oblongata, and when injured, will show upper motor neuron signs like hyperreflexia. Like the dorsal columns, this tract will also cross over at the level of the brainstem. However, like the spinothalamic tract, the cervical information will be more medial, whereas the sacral and lumbar information will be more lateral. Other motor tracts include the vestibulospinal tract, which does balance, the tectospinal, which does postural reflexes, reticulospinal, which does other reflexes, and the rubrospinal, which does posture. These are all extra pyramidal tracks. Now it's time for NPTE Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise, you've got five, four, three, two, one. Pain and crude touch can be measured by sharp dull discrimination and temperature can be measured by cool or warm vials of water placed against the skin. Both are part of the lateral and anterior spinothalamic tract sensory input. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, you can always check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy or you can comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.